Mabala the farmer. Chapter 1 Mabala Mabala was born in Dar es Salaam when Dar es Salaam was still a small town. In fact, his parents came from Tabora, but they moved to Dar es Salaam before Mabala was born. So, Mabala grew up in Dar es Salaam. He went to primary school. He finished standard 8 in 1961, the year of independence. He got a job working for the company in Dar es Salaam. He worked in the office there for 25 years and finally became chief clerk. However, Mabala had two problems. The first problem was that when he started his life, he was not careful with his money. He liked to spend it and enjoy himself. So he had no savings. He never built a house. He didn't look for a farm. He made no preparations for the future. In 1975, he married a girl called Mauja. Mabala met her when she came from Tabora to visit her brother who was working in the same company as Mabala. Mabala married her and lived a happy life with his wife, spending and spending, but he still did not make preparations for the future. Then, in 1979, after a lot of worries, Mauja, at last, gave birth to a baby girl. They called her Martina. Mabala now realized he had to save and prepare for the future. He tried to save from his salary, but this was a time when prices went up and up and up. Mama Martina tried to help him by making marks and selling them, but still the prices went up. She started to cook chapatis to sell, but still the prices went up. Finally, Mabala and his wife realized that this life was impossible. They were running faster and faster, but they were not moving at all. They were working harder and harder, but their life remained the same. So, one day, Mabala and his wife sat down and discussed what to do. Martina was now ready to go to Standard 1, and they didn't even know how they would buy the uniform. This brings me to Mabala's second problem. My friend Mabala had a good heart. He was generous. He helped others. He worked hard, but he was stubborn. If he decided to do something, you could never change his mind. Even if you proved to him that he was wrong, he would not change his mind. His wife knew this. She realized that sometimes it was a waste of time to argue with him. Maybe this was because Mabala grew up without any relatives except his family. He was the only child. His father was also an only child and his parents, Mabala's grandparents, had died soon after he moved to Dar es Salaam. Maybe here we can say that Mabala had a third problem, a problem which was not his fault. He had never lived in a village. He had never cultivated a farm. He did not know how hard the work was. He had listened to the radio and he had read books and he thought that life in the village was wonderful. So, one day, he called his wife and said to her, Mama Martina, we are doing nothing here in town. Let's go to the village. Life on the farm is easier than life in town. You wake up when you want to. You plant, you weed, you harvest. You eat. No problem. Mama Martina grew up in the village. She told him, Buana, life on the farm is not easy. You have to work hard. Of course, if you work hard, you can have a good life. But you have to work very hard. That's not true, Mama Martina. You know it's not true. Let's go to the village. Maybe we can get a better life said Mabala, but you will have to work hard. If we don't work hard, we will fail. Mama Martina insisted. Rubbish, said Mabala again. You dig, you plant, you weed, you eat, no problem.
Mama Martina realized her husband was in a stubborn mood, so she told him, All right, but it is no good doing things too fast. I have some relatives in Morogoro. They tell me that there is a lot of land. Let me go and see them. And then, the first year, I will cultivate there while you continue to work here. If I succeed, you can resign next year and join me on the farm. Mabala agreed. So, that year, Mama Martina moved to her relatives in Morogoro. She got a farm of 10 acres. Of course, that year, she couldn't cultivate the whole farm, but she planted according to the instructions of the Buan Shamba, and she used a fertilizer in the right way. So, she got 60 bags of maize. Now, 60 bags of maize was more than Mabala's salary for the whole year. So, they decided Mabala would resign and come and join his wife in the village together with Martina. Mabala the Farmer Chapter 2 Mabala's first day on the farm When Mabala arrived, he was still sure that life on the farm was easy. The harvest was finished and the peasants were resting for the short time before clearing their chambers again ready for the rains. They found a place for Martina in the primary school and Mabala spent this short time getting to know his neighbors and building a small temporary house for his family. It was a small friendly village and he was quickly accepted by everyone. After all, they already knew his wife, so they all helped him to build his house. It was soon time to start digging the chamber again. Mabala was always telling everyone that he was ready to work very hard. The first day, he told his wife to wake him up very early. She woke up at 5 o'clock. She prepared the bath water for her husband, cooked some porridge, and then she woke him. At least, she tried to wake him up, but he refused. It's too early, Mama Martina. You can't dig in the dark. You will cut off your foot. Mabala pulled up a sheet again and continued to sleep. His wife went to work in the chamber on her own. The ground was sandy and soft, and she was working well when her husband arrived at half past eight. Oh, Mama Martina, why didn't you wake me up? I told you, but I did wake you up. You refused to get out of bed, said Mama Martina. You didn't try hard enough, Mabala replied. Mama Martina didn't waste her time arguing. She went on digging. So, Mabala also started to work. They worked side by side. Mama Martina soon began to work ahead of her husband. One meter, two meters, three meters. Her husband's work got slower and slower. He was always stopping for a rest. He began to complain that his back was hurting. His legs are hurting. His arms are hurting. His hands are hurting. Mama Martina, why are you going so fast? There is no hurry. We don't have to finish the chamber today. Mama Martina didn't listen. She knew the rainy season was near. She knew the first rain with her planting. She wanted to finish all the cultivating before the rain started. Her husband continued to complain. Mama Martina, don't go so fast. That is not the way to farm at all. You will get too tired and then you won't be able to cultivate tomorrow. Mama Martina laughed. Her hole went up and down, up and down. Each time, it went down with a loud talk. Clouds of air surrounded her. Mabala walked here and sneezed. <coughs> this dust is too much. We need a tractor, Mama Martina. Why don't we wait for the village tractor? The only answer was, talk, talk, talk. Mabala tried again. Mama Martina, haven't you brought any food to the shamba? I am hungry. You can't dig on empty stomach. Let's stop and eat. Then we'll dig much better. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Mama Martina said nothing. So Mabala started to work again. He worked for 15 minutes. That was enough for him. He called again. Mama Martina. Tuck. 
Mama Martina. Talk, talk, talk. Ah, that woman will kill herself for no reason. Mabala said. He put down his hole and went to sit down under the nearby mango tree. Mabala the farmer. Chapter 3. Mabala has a rest. After sitting down, Mabala opened Mama Martina's basket to see if she had brought any food. He found some maize and beans. He told himself, I will only eat a small amount and then I will continue working. He finished a quarter of the food. Then he started to put the dish back into the basket but his stomach complained. Well, just a little more. This digging is hard. So, he took out the dish and started eating again. He finished another quarter. That's enough. The rest is for Mama Martina. He put the dish back in the basket and started to stand up. His stomach complained again. Ah, this woman, why does she bring so little food? I still feel hungry and it's only half past 11. It's her fault. She should prepare more food. Let me eat a little more. She won't realize. So, he sat down again and ate another quarter. Then, he shook the remainder of the maize and beans to hide how much he had eaten. Then, he put the dish back into the basket. This time, he did actually stand up. But now, everything was hurting. Arms, hands, legs, back, head, neck, even his toes were hurting. He was also beginning to feel sleepy after eating so much. Let me rest first for 15 minutes, then I'll go back to work. As soon as he sat down, he felt hungry. He looked at the dish. He started to pick it up. No, that's for Mama Martina. But why did she cook so little? It's her fault. Yes, I'll teach her a lesson. If she cooks too little, she cannot expect to eat. How can you cultivate when you're starving? He picked up the dish and finished all the food. That will teach her. Then, after all his hard work and hard eating, Mabala lay down and went to sleep. Some of the villagers going past the shamba were very surprised. There was Mama Martina working hard. But where is Baba Martina? Then, they saw him under the tree, fast asleep. They laughed and shook their heads. Hmm, this town people. Meanwhile, Mama Martina continued to work very hard. She was quite happy that her husband was resting because he did very little work anyway. And he was always trying to interrupt her. By one o'clock, she had finished a big piece of the shamba. So, she decided to drink a little water and eat some food before continuing. She walked slowly back to the tree where she left her basket. There she found Mabala fast asleep. She smiled and went to the basket and pulled out a dish of food. Lo! She couldn't believe her eyes. All the food was finished. She was very angry indeed. She looked at her husband, then shook him hard. Wake up! Baba Martina, wake up! It's time to eat. Oh, good, said Mabala. Have you brought some more maize and beans? That first lot was delicious. Mama Martina could not believe her ears. The man was not even sorry. No, I have not brought any more food. I was cultivating. Now I am hungry. What am I going to eat? Mabala realized his mistake. I'm very sorry, Mama Martina. I was very hungry. After all my hard work, I was so hungry that I couldn't stop myself. Let's finish work for today. Then you can cook some more food. Anyway, it's your fault. Why did you cook so little? As he was talking, Mama Martina got more and more angry. Finally, she stopped him. What are you talking about? I came here on my own last year. I did all the work myself. 
We got a good harvest. Now, you say you have come to help me. Is this helping me? Sleeping under the tree, eating all my food, telling me to go and cook some more? Ah! She was so angry that she could not continue speaking. But her eyes were full of anger. Mabala knew that look. He knew his wife. He also knew he was wrong. There was nothing he could do. It was useless to apologize because his wife was still hungry. He regretted eating all the food. Quickly, he picked up the hose and a basket. Come on, my wife. I was wrong. Please forgive me. I won't do it again. Let's go to Mantamaba, where they sell roast meat and bananas. But that will not solve our problem. If we waste our money like this, we will never succeed. Don't worry, Mama Martina. I will not make the same mistake again. I am very sorry. I was wrong. You must remember, I am still learning. Please forgive me. Mama Martina was not satisfied. But what could she do? Once the water has been spilled, you can't pick it up again. So, when Mabala set off for the Ambata bar, carrying the hose, she sighed heavily and followed him slowly. Mabala the Farmer Chapter 4 At the Emtama Bar When they got to the bar, Mabala ordered meat and bananas and a big plastic bag of Emtama. Mama Martina drank in silence until the food was ready. Then she ate quickly and returned home to see Martina and prepare the evening meal. Mabala stayed in the bar talking and drinking with the villagers. After drinking for some time, the villagers asked him, Why have you come to the village? All our young men go to town. But now you leave town and come to the village. Buana said Mbala, I don't know what your young men are doing in town. But I can tell you one thing. Life in town is very, very tough. You can't live on your salary. Then, why do the young men say you have a better life in town? Electricity, films. Shops full of things, plenty of food in the market, water from taps, so many things. It's true, all those things are there, but you still need money to get them. Look, I used to wake up every day at 5 o'clock a.m. I ate one bun for breakfast and rushed to get a bath. I worked all day. In the afternoon, no chance for eating again. The food in town was too expensive, so I work all day on an empty stomach. Believe me, but still, I found that I was going nowhere. No, life in town is not easy unless you steal or you have other projects for making money. Many of the villagers knew Mabala was telling the truth. After all, they went to town and saw the light there. But one old man, Mr. Kumbo, was not satisfied. He said, Ah, we hear all these stories, but you're not telling the truth. The problem in the big towns these days is that all the men want to drink beer and chase girls. Mabala laughed. Mizze, do you know the price of beer these days? If I use all my salary to buy beer, I could buy only 20 beers for the whole of my salary. All my salary nothing for food or house rent or bus fares no mizze we can't afford to drink beer we were drinking mtama in town or they call it mtama but it was not as good as the mtama here in the village and as for girls haven't you heard the song marida di sana mabala sang marida di sana marida di sana marida di sana Tia Shingoni, Sigara Mkononi, Tia Shingoni, Sigara Mkononi, Lakini Hawana, Pese Mfukuni, Maridani Sana, Maridani Sana, Maridani Sana. No money. First, you must dress smartly. And where is the money to buy smart clothing? Then, you must give her a present, and not a small one either. Where is the money for that? Then, you must take her out to the cinema or somewhere else. Where is all this money? 
And after all that, she'll probably say no because she has found somebody better. I go without food all day. And then, you want me to spend money on girls? No, thank you. Everyone laughed. Mabella was now beginning to get drunk. He went on. But my friends, life in the village is not easy either. Today, I went to dig and my whole body started to ache. Headache, backache, leg ache. How do you do it? Oh, that's why we saw you fast asleep under the tree. So you thought farming was easy. Hey, yes, you dig, you plant, you weed, you harvest, you eat. That's all, isn't it? How do you all manage it? You seem to work a little and drink a lot, but your farms are very good. We work hard, my friend. If you work hard, you will get used to the work. Mabala, as usual, refused to listen. It's not true. Your wives do all the work. You men are just drinking. The men were amused by Mabala's words, but were also a bit hurt. They knew that a farming life is a tough one. It was not just drinking and talking. So, they decided to teach Mabala a lesson. That drinking and farming cannot be cooked in the same spot. They told Mabala, Your problem is that you don't work the right way. And Tama gives you strength to work. So, when you wake up in the morning, drink some Tama instead of porridge. Take a gallon of Tama to the farm with you. If you feel your back is starting to ache, drink a little Tama. If your arm starts to ache, drink a little Tama. If your legs start to ache, drink a little Tama. And when your head starts to ache, lie down and rest for 5 minutes and you'll be fine. Is that really so? Ask Mabala, if you drink Ntama, you will work well? Yes, said the man. A hoe is not like a pen. It needs Ntama to keep it moving. That is the way we all work. Well, friends, said Mabala, you see how ignorant I am. Hey sister, can you lend me a gallon can to take with me tomorrow? The girl brought a gallon can from inside the house, filled it with Ntama and gave it to Mabala. He paid for the Ntama and started to walk home. On the way home, he started to sing, Oh Jamani, life is tough. Where is the solution? In the city, wake up early, always on the run. In the shamba, wake up early, diggings never done. Oh Jamani, Life is tough. Where is the solution? In the city, shops are full, but packets are empty. In the shamba, sales are crops, and then the shop is empty. Oh, Jamani, life is tough. Where is the solution? They tell us, they tell us, agriculture is the backbone. I ask them, what about my own backbone? They say, they say, work is life. Work will solve our problem. I say, I ask them, where is your shamba? But oh my back, and oh my head, and oh my hands. Will I ever learn? Can I ever learn to be a farmer? Oh Jamani, life is tough. Where is the solution? Mabala the farmer. Chapter 5 The Hoe and the Gallon Can The next day, Mabala followed the man's advice. As soon as he woke up, he washed his face, then drank some umbata from the gallon can. His wife was very surprised. What are you doing, Baba Martina? Are you becoming a drunkard? Of course not, Mama Martina. This is the way to cultivate well. You should know that. We are born in the village. Yes, I was born in the village. That is why I know you never drink before farming. The problem is, women are weak. We men can drink and work. The men told me so in the Entama bar. Mama Martina was going to reply, but just then, 
Her neighbor called her. She went out to see him and he told her, Please, Mama Martina, don't be surprised and don't be angry if your husband drinks today. Don't be angry with us and don't be angry with him. He thinks work on the farm. He thinks work on the farm is just drinking and enjoying himself. We want to teach him a lesson. Let him drink. Then let him see if he can work. Mama Martina laughed. All right, but only today. Of course, one day is enough. He won't do it again. Mabala was now ready to go to the shamba, so they left. Mama Martina carried the hoe and a basket of maize and beans again. Mabala carried the hoe and a gallon can. When they reached the shamba, they started to work, but Mabala soon got tired. After an hour, everything began to ache. He remembered the advice of the men. If anything starts to wake, drink a little and tama. He put down his hoe and drank a little. After 20 minutes, he drank a little more and a little more and a little more and a little more. He soon found it difficult to lift his hoe and then his head started to ache. So again, he remembered the advice. When the head starts to ache, lie down and rest for five minutes. He went to the mango tree nearby and quickly went to sleep. Mama Martina realized what was happening, but she said nothing. She just took her hoe and went on cultivating or weeding. When it was time for lunch, she went to the mango tree and found Mabala fast asleep. But in the basket, all the food was there. Mabala was snoring loudly. So, Mama Martina shook him. Wake up, Baba Martina. It's time to eat. Wake up. Mabala did not reply. She shook him again. Wake up. You have slept for three hours. Please, don't disturb me, Mama Martina. I'm just resting for a few minutes. A few minutes? It's one o'clock. Wake up and eat. Don't make jokes, woman. I've been asleep for a few minutes only. Look at the sun. Then, Mabala looked at the sun. He was shocked. But a man told me that if my head aches, I must lie down for a few minutes. Well, they were wrong. Now eat. When Mabala looked at the food, he didn't want to eat at all. His head was aching very badly. He just wanted to sleep. So, he turned over and went to sleep again. Mama Martina laughed. She ate her food and went back to work. By evening, she had finished a big part of the shamba. So, she went back to her husband. He was still asleep. She shook him again. It's evening and you are still asleep. Look at you. You lazy man. You have done no work at all. Mabala tried to say something. But his head still ached. He felt that little men were hammering inside his head. His mouth was drying. His legs were weak. So he could say nothing. He picked up his hole and tried to walk back to the village. He found that he could not walk straight. So Mama Martina had to help him. When they got to the village, the men at the Entama bar called Mabala. How was the farming today? Terrible. Your advice was hopeless. I followed your advice. I drank in summer when I woke up. And then, when anything started to ache, I drank again. Then, I went to sleep. When my head started to ache, I slept the whole day. And now, my head is aching even more. I'm never going to follow your advice again. The men laughed and laughed. Listen, Buana. We wanted to teach you a lesson. You think life is easy in the village and that we just drink without doing any work. And when we give you good advice about working hard, you won't listen. So we decided to show you that drink and work don't go together. We work hard. Look at our hands. Now look at your hands. You don't know how to work. If you want to succeed, you must work hard like your wife. 
If your legs start to ache, go on working. If your arms start to ache, go on working. Even if your head starts to ache, go on working. It will be very difficult for the first two weeks. But after that, you'll be used to the work. It will not be easy, but you'll be able to cope with it. Mabala looked at them with big eyes. Then he shook his head. He had nothing to say. They were right. He shook his head a second time and walked slowly home. Hey, Baba Martina, sing us another song, the man shouted. But he didn't sing a song. He went back home, ate quietly, and went to bed. The next morning, he woke up early and went to the farm and worked all day. His wife was surprised and happy, and in the evening, she cooked him a special meal. After that, Mabala gradually got used to the work. However, he was still stubborn. Even when he didn't know, he refused to take any advice. He thought that he knew everything. Even the story of Antama did not change him. So, he soon got into more troubles. Mabala the Farmer Chapter 6 Mabala and the Fertilizer the time for putting fertilizer on the fields had come. Mabala said he would take the fertilizer for his wife because she wanted to wash clothes. She told Mabala to pour half the fertilizer into a basket because the whole bag would be too heavy for him. But Mabala refused to listen. I am a man. This is a small bag. Of course, I can carry it. But my husband, the shamba is a long way away. Quiet woman, I am now strong and tough. I am used to the work. Well, in Kiswahili, they say that if a child cries for a razor blade, give it to him, he will learn. Baba Martina said no more. Mabala took the fertilizer and set off for the farm. First, he carried the fertilizer under his arm. It was too heavy. Then, he tried to carry it in front of him. It was still too heavy. He put it on his shoulder. Too heavy again. He pushed it round his neck. Ah, much too heavy. So, he tried to put it on his head. That was better. But then, his arms began to get tired. So, he took away his arm. Then, the bag fell off his head. He put the bag on his head again. It fell off. Soon, all the children of the village we're following him. So, Mabala tried to carry the bag under his arm again. Still, too heavy. In front of him, too heavy. On the shoulder, too heavy. He put it on his head again. But as soon as he took his hand away, it fell off. All the children laughed. Now, Mabala did not want to fail in front of the children. He put a fertilizer on his head again. It fell off. Once, twice, three times, four times, and then the bag split and some of the fertilizers fell out. Mabala quickly picked up the bag and carried it away. One of his neighbors saw the fertilizer on the ground. When he looked at it, he saw that it was sugar, not fertilizer. He called Mabala and asked him, Why are you taking so much sugar to the shamba? Do you want to cook tea for all the farmers? I am not taking sugar. This is fertilizer. This is not fertilizer. It is sugar, said his neighbor, who was called Sekulu. It is fertilizer, said Mabala. You surprise me. You live in the village, but you can't see the difference between sugar and fertilizer. Buana, it is sugar. Taste. It is sugar. Taste it and see. Oh, now I see. You want to kill me. If I eat fertilizer, I will die. No, don't waste your time anymore. I'm going to the shamba. Sekulu tried once more. You are wasting my time. I tell you, if you want to eat fertilizer, that is your problem. I am going to put it on my farm. He picked up his bag and left. Sekulu ran to Mama Martina. When she heard the story, 
She left her clothes in the basket and ran to the farm. She found Mabella was just starting after the hard job of carrying the home back to the shamba. Oh, Mama Martina, have you finished washing the clothes already? No, I haven't. I have left the clothes in the basket because I have been told you have brought sugar instead of fertilizer. The same story, said Mabala. You have been talking to Sekulu, haven't you? Yes, I have. You should thank God for good neighbors like Sekulu. Look, can't you see that this is the bag of sugar you brought from Dar es Salaam when you moved here? Mama Martina picked out some of the fertilizer, ate it, and forced Mabala to taste it as well. Mabala had nothing to say again. He had to pick up the bag again, which now seemed to be even heavier, and carry it all the way back to their house. The next day, he went with his wife to put fertilizer on their maize. When they got to the field, Mama Martina went to one side, and Mabala went to the other side of the farm. Fortunately, after a short while, Mama Martina looked in the direction of her husband. She realized that he was putting fertilizer in the middle of each maize plant. Instead of rounded, she ran over to him. Baba Martina, you are making a mistake. Don't put the fertilizer on the maize plant. Why not? We want the maize to grow, don't we? If we put the fertilizer on the maize plant, it will grow faster. It won't grow faster. It will die. You must put the fertilizer on the maize plant. No, no, no. That's rubbish. This time, I am right. It is obvious that you should put the fertilizer on the maize. Baba Martina said his wife, who was now getting a little angry. Why do you never listen to what people tell you? That fertilizer is very strong. If you put it on the maize, it will burn it. The maize will go yellow and die. What do you mean I never listen to anyone? I am reading books about agriculture these days. I want to farm scientifically, not like the old days. Of course, I also want to farm scientifically. And according to science, don't put the fertilizer on the maize. Mabala also got angry. The trouble with you, Mama Martina, is that you think you know everything. Just because you grew up in a village, you don't know everything. If you put fertilizer around a plant, it will go straight into the ground and the plant will get nothing. Can a plant walk to pick out the fertilizer? No, I am going to feed the plant direct. Mama Martina didn't know what to say. Her husband was so stubborn. Finally, she said, All right, Baba Martina, we want to be scientific, don't we? Let's do an experiment. You put fertilizer on the maize for the two rows of maize. I will finish the rest of the field in the same way that I cultivated last year. Then we will see who is right. Mabala agreed, took the fertilizer, and carefully put some of it in the middle of the maize plant. Unfortunately for him, Sekulu was walking past the field when he was arguing with his wife. When he told the other villagers, they all laughed, and soon, a new song was heard in the village about Buana Hambikiliki, Mr. Never Told. Once upon a time, there was a farmer, a farmer, a farmer, a farmer full of strange and new ideas. We laughed until our eyes were full of tears. Plants are like men, he told us. They like a cup of tea from time to time, so give them sugar. Give them sugar, give them sugar, and they'll grow strong and full of maize. Oh, we told him, we told him, we told him, but his ears were blocked. Mr. Never told, would never listen. We took the sugar and put it in our tea. He put it in the maize and sad to say, the plant never said thank you. Instead, they fell down dead. Stupid plants, he cried. They don't know how to live at all. Oh, Mr. Never Told, when will you ever learn? Plants are hungry, he said. Their leaves are open like mouths. So, give them food. Give them food. 
give them food, pour it down their throats, put it on the ground. They can't walk to pick it up. Oh, we told him. We told him. We told him. His ears were blocked. Mr. Never told would never listen. He took the food. He poured it down their throat and started to say, the plants never said thank you. Instead, they fell down dead. Stupid plants, he said. They don't know how to live at all. Oh, Mr. Never told, when will you ever listen? What new ideas are this? And more are coming, we hear. Seeds get lonely, he says. They would like to be planted together. So plant five seeds in each hole. In each hole, in each hole, they will grow together. Oh, we tell him, we tell him, we tell him. But his ears are blocked. Mr. Never told, will never listen. When will he ever learn? When Mama Martina heard the song, it was the last row. She decided that she had suffered enough. That evening, she asked her husband, Have you heard the song they are singing about you in the village? What song? Buona Hambiliki. The song is all about sugar instead of fertilizer and putting fertilizer in the plant. Mabala laughed. They are just jealous because I know more than them. What? Said Mama Martina. Jealous? They are laughing at you because you know nothing about farming and you refuse to learn. That's not true. I read. I think. I try new ideas. Not like all of you. You farm the same way every year. Yes. And we are eating all because of it. It is not true that we don't change. If the Buana Shamba shows us new ideas which work, we follow them. He knows what he is talking about. No, you are wrong. You just laugh at me because I come from town. But you wait, I will show you my ideas are right. If you want to do that, said Mama Martina, then go and find your own farm. I have had enough. People are laughing at you. They are laughing at me because I am your wife. They are laughing at Martina when she goes to school, so that she doesn't want to go to school anymore. Why are they laughing? It is not because you don't know. There are many things which we don't know, but you refuse to listen to people who do know. Mabala started to speak to his wife, but his wife went on. No, let me finish. I've had enough. I have tried to put up with you and teach you, but you won't listen. So, either you go back to town and leave us here, or you find a job here in the village. But, if you come to the farm again, I will leave you. Look at all the maize in this house. I agree with without your help. Now, you want to destroy our fields and destroy our name as well. What kind of fright is this? You think that just because you are born in town, you know everything, but you know nothing. Nothing. Mama Martina started to cry. Mabala tried to talk to her, but she kept on saying, If you come to the Shamba again, I am leaving. Actually, Mabala had already heard the song. After hearing it, he had gone to the Shamba. He had seen that all the maize in the two rows of his was yellow and dying, while the rest of the maize was dark green and healthy. He had nothing to say. His wife was right, and the truth hurts. Mabala the Farmer Chapter 7 Mabala wins respect Fortunately for Mabala, the village had no accountant, so there were a lot of problems with the accounts of the village. The next day, Mabala went to the village chairman and offered to help with the accounts. The chairman agreed and Mabala tried to write the accounts properly for all the village activities. When the villagers saw it, they started to make more jokes. Oh, Mr. Mabala, have you ordered the sacks of sugar for the maize? Are the books lonely? And many other comments. Mabala said nothing. He was determined to prove to his wife and all the village that he could do something useful for the village. He worked all day. 
He even gave up drinking because he was working at night. Soon, the villagers began to realize that the accounts of the village were in good order. In fact, one of the shop assistants had to run away because he realized that Mabala would catch him. The shop was now full of things to buy. Everything was ordered in good time. The building program was written out properly so everyone could understand. By harvest time, people had stopped laughing at him. They were grateful for his good work. His wife also saw the change in him. She was now happy. People now praised their husband. And Martina was happy at school because the children were not laughing at her anymore. At harvest time, Mama Martina allowed her husband back into the field. They harvested together. It was a very good harvest, except of course, from a ballast two rows, and they had to hire a pickup to carry all the maize back to their house. That evening, they sat talking before they went to bed. Mabala joked with his wife, You see, I told you, life is easy. You dig, you plant, you weed, you harvest, you eat. No problem. Look at all this maize. Mama Martina smiled, but I am sure you understand now that it is hard work. Oh yes, I do. But now I am ready to work. You should let me back to the shamba. I have learned my lesson. I am reading a lot of books about agriculture. Mama Martina smiled again. Books are not enough, Mama Martina. You must listen to the farmers themselves and watch what they do. They are experts. They have been farming for years. It is true, said Mabala, but still, a few ideas are good. Of course, agreed his wife, but not the ideas you had before. They both laughed. Mama Martina said, Yes, I will allow you back into the shamba for two reasons. I think you have learned a lesson. But there is another reason. Life on the farm is good for us. I think we are going to have another child. For once, Mabala could only listen. He was so happy that he could say nothing at first. Martina was now nine years old and she was their only child. Now, they are going to have another one. God has blessed their move to the village. Suddenly, Mabala jumped up and began to add to the songs of Wanya Hambikili. Suddenly, Mabala jumped up and began to add to the song of Wanya Hambikili. Plants don't like sugar. They say, they say, plants can't eat fertilizer. They say, they say, but Mr. Never Told is learning. Life is tough. They say, they say, the back aches and aches. I know, I know. But somehow, Baba Martina and Mama Martina together will make it, will make it. We'll make it.